I'm doing a first impression review of the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Instant Perfector 4-in-1 Glow Makeup and today we'll be using the shade 01 Light. So here's the shade 01 Light, freshly applied and a dried swatch and as you can see it gets a little bit lighter as it dries. So this foundation has an antimicrobial sponge applicator, much like its famous sister, the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser Concealer. Now I named this video Love It or Hate It for a very specific reason. When I went to look at the reviews for this, it seemed that this was one of those foundations that people either absolutely loved or absolutely hated. And I had quite the roller coaster myself as I was trying this out, which of course I'll take you along with me and describe. But first, let's cover the basics. They advertise this as a primer, concealer, highlighter, and BB cream in one. It's light coverage, and it has five shades from light to very deep. It says it has self-adjusting shades, but keep in mind, this isn't one of those foundations that has little micro beads in it that adjust to your skin tone. I interpret what they're saying as just that this foundation is so light that it's a little bit more forgiving if you don't have the exact shade that matches your skin. So to finish up with our basics, I happily did not detect any added fragrance or perfumes in this foundation. And I wanted to mention that I feel like this foundation is a dupe for a luxury foundation. And if you'll stick around to when I'm doing swatches at the end, I'll show you which one I'm talking about. And also I'll tell you which one I think is better. So on the left half of my face, I obviously used a beauty blender to blend it in, and it really soaked up quite a bit of the product, so I thought I'd try a brush on this side and see how it worked. I eventually came to the conclusion that the best way to apply this was to initially apply it with a brush and then just go back over it with a beauty blender to soften it up and really blend it in. Now I don't always show this for every foundation, but the dry down time for this particular foundation was just a little bit over 10 minutes, which is going to be important later on. And of course dry down time doesn't mean that you have to wait 10 minutes before you put on any other powder or blush or anything like that. It just means at that point it's not gonna transfer as easily and you'll have an idea of what the foundation truly looks like. So as you'll see here, I have one very light layer all over my face. It's very fresh, it's very natural, but of course I wanted to try to build it up to see if we could get any more coverage with it. So when initially applying this product to my face, I noticed how moisturizing it felt, extremely moisturizing, almost to the point where it felt like a serum or an oil. And I think it goes without saying that this product is obviously aimed at those of us with drier skin or normal to dry skin, I would say. If you have oily skin, obviously there's glow in the title of the foundation. It's such a slippery, dewy formulation that I don't think this is one that you would wanna reach for. But hey, the fun of makeup is that you can try whatever you want. So if that's your jam, then go for it. Now here's where the roller coaster of my review starts. When I first tried it, I loved how it felt. I normally love dewy foundations. You know, we're told that as we start to get a little bit older, that we need to have foundations that have more moisture and are a little bit more dewy to kind of counteract the dryness of our skin. However, I do think there is a point where you can get your skin so dewy or so highlighted that it kind of starts to have the reverse effect and it really starts showing off those fine lines and texture again. And that's kind of where I was at this point. I will say it looked better on camera than it looked in real life. But as you can see, my texture's kind of coming through. It's extremely, extremely glowy. So at this point in the review, I thought, mm, I don't know that I like this one. So I did what I normally do, which is finish the rest of my makeup, take my pictures in different light, and here's where the dry time came into effect. I thought that I did not like this foundation, but after the 10 minutes of dry down time, a lot of the glow went away, and then I was just left with this really soft, very light foundation look. So there were definitely a lot of ups and downs with this one, but in the end, I did like the way it looked. And going in for our transfer test here, I was surprised at this. There was no transfer at all. 
I had anticipated, because it's such a dewy formula, that there was going to be quite a bit of transfer. And then again, going in for our water and sweat test. Again, this is another foundation that doesn't advertise itself as being waterproof, but there you have it, no budging whatsoever. And after looking at how the foundation looks in different types of light, I want to give you some swatches and a dupe alert. The top swatch is the one we did today, the Maybelline Glow in 01 Light. Then we have the Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh Tint and Light, the Misha in 21 Light Beige, and the Essence in 30 Neutral Ivory. And right here is your luxury dupe. So the Maybelline foundation we tried today reminded me so much of the Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh Tint that I tried a few weeks back. The Maybelline has slightly more coverage and slightly more glow, but in the end, they came out to a pretty similar look. And as we switch over to looking at these swatches in sunlight now, I'll tell you that I like the Maybelline better than the Chanel. And considering the Maybelline comes in at $12.99 US over the Chanel, which comes in at $65, it's really no contest for me. Thanks so much for watching today and join me over on Facebook for some more Foundation Lady info and fun. By the way, does anybody else have a coworker that's always up in your business? Probably just need a good ear scratch.